So you can easily grow sphagnum moss by having it growing on top of some peat moss in a pot using the tray method where it's sitting in water. And that keeps the sphagnum mo moss moist without actually being waterlogged. Here I have a pot where I had a little bit of peat moss with a tad of sphagnum and a grass clipping that flew from the lawnmower. But it's, you know, sunk in there. And you can see where I have a Venus flytrap that needs to be transplanted and I have some more sphagnum moss. But we're going to show you how to create a big mat of sphagnum moss in this video. Well, you can use a tray that holds water and punch holes so that you don't drown out the sphagnum and let it drain. Using a screen over a tray that doesn't hold water is an alternative method. That's why you don't have to ruin a perfectly good tray by punching holes in it. And um, this will let you create a nice big mat of sphagnum moss. I have a smaller tray since I don't have a lot of sphagnum moss. I'm going to use that. It's a little dirty, but um, it should be fine. And instead of using a screen, I'm using some landscape fabric. So I cut a piece that's um, the right size to fit at the bottom. And that's what we're going to use. I propped the tray on top of a brick because the blades of grass were poking up through the fabric. I have this tray that I filled with old peat moss and sphagnum moss and I had some peat moss mixed in with sand as growing media. And I did accidentally mow the lawn in the direction of it and filled it with all these grass clippings. But anyway, I like to reuse the stuff versus throw it away, so I'm going to be using this as the base substrate that's going to go above the landscape fabric. And one of the benefits by growing your own is because sphagnum grows too slowly and it takes a long time for peat to form. And it's not considered a re renewable resource because of that. And that's one of the benefits of growing your own sphagnum too. And you just want to flatten it out and make it nice and even at the bottom of the tray. You don't have to fill up the tray all the way to the top, but you could always do that and then set it in a um, water, you know, a tray of water to use like the water method if you want it to stay really hydrated in the summer. But you could always take this and dip it in water for a little bit or pour water over to keep the moss hydrated as you're letting it grow through the growing season. And this will give you a nice, good, practical way to start growing a nice mat of sphagnum moss. And I chose to leave it near the bottom of the tray to let it fill up the tray versus grow on top and over. But it's just a matter of preference, however anyone wants to do it. Okay, I have enough peat moss in here. And there's a piece of sphagnum. You can see it has a little greenery, so hopefully that will grow and start filling up as well. And, you know, you want to make sure it's nice and flat, but it's, it's not a big deal because the moss is just going to grow on top of that anyway. And, you know, water will drain out and any gunk that goes in there will be washed out from underneath. That's one reason why I didn't bother cleaning the tray, even though I could have rinsed off the dirt on there. But I didn't think it was too crucial with sphagnum. So I drained the water in this tray. It was really drenched because we had four days of rain. You can see the Venus flytrap isn't too happy. I bought this recently and I stuck it in there, but I really need to plant it before it starts getting even worse. And I have these smaller containers with uh, sphagnum moss on there, and I'm going to use this small one that has still some live pieces on top because it keeps toppling over in the tray. So we're going to dump it in there and then start spreading the sphagnum across there. So they filled up the whole thing with sphagnum, not just the top, but the top layer is where it stays green. The bottom layer tends to be more dead because it doesn't receive light and ends up sitting in water. So we're going to be using the top where it's still alive and green. And just take the portions and spread them out evenly throughout the top of the uh, peat moss that we have in that tray. And this way, as it grows, it will evenly spread out through the whole tray and fill up and we'll have a nice mat of sphagnum moss growing in this tray. So that's all there is to it. You know, you want to keep it moist so that the sphagnum is continually growing versus dry and it stops growing. And you can leave this out year round. If it freezes in the winter, it should be fine because sphagnum is found in a lot of uh, higher latitudes on Earth. But anyway, I hope you found this video uh, useful and thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.